So these are the top 10 recordings that influenced my solo guitar playing. So it's kind of a specific thing. It's a very specific thing. Okay. And, and I just want you to like, give me that right off the top of your, your head. Why? Earl Clue, solo guitar. So clean, so elegant. And again, that fascination with multiple parts. When I first heard him, I didn't think it was possible. It was just like, there's no way that one person can do all this. And I just trusted that it, it was possible and listened to it over again. And I think once I realized it was possible in my mind, then it started becoming more possible in my playing. Tuck and Patty, Tears of Joy. That was such a great record, so positive, and the way that Tuck accompanied a vocalist was brand new for me at the time. I'd only seen guitar duos play like Rubato, you know, like Misty, Super Slow, things like that. And Tuck was just so grooving, so swinging, and so imaginative. Chuck Andrus, Reckless Precision. I think that, that stands as kind of a hallmark recording for so many people in terms of the how much one guitar player can do um, and all those different styles of music with his just incredible sound. Joe Pass, Blue for Fred. Yeah, Blues for Fred is his album dedicated to Fred Astaire. And I just love, I love the virtuoso recordings, of course, and I remember Charlie Parker. But that album, to me, his playing is so fresh and so melodic and, and so swinging. To me, that's a like the textbook album of solo guitar. Alex Degrassi, Deep at Night. Again, going back to um, Tuck, who was also on Wyndham Hill at the time, this larger-than-life solo guitar sound that was in contrast to maybe, you know, a folk acoustic players, just this incredibly cinematic produced uh, guitar that was larger than life. And Alex's harmonic and compositional sensibilities were very influential on me. It was like jazz, but not changes, but he played the same things. Uh, sounded like impressionistic music to me. Very cool. Oscar Peterson, my favorite instrument. Such a great album. So now we're into solo piano. So it's like listen to solo piano and, and realize all the things that you'll never be able to do as a solo <laughs> guitarist. But nonetheless, try to strive for some of that. And, uh, but what I but what I love about that album, and I mentioned in my little annotations there, is that the way that Oscar Peterson approaches ballads, and people don't usually talk about that. You know, they just talk about his technique and his octaves and incredible chops which is in, is so great to listen to but his ballad playing is is unbelievable and his sense of harmony and his use of the entire keyboard range was very inspiring Thelonious Monk Thelonious alone in San Francisco every time Monk plays solo it's just so inspiring I mean you could take that first couple of chords I and mean, you could freeze some of his chord voicings and just do a whole study in that it's so enriching to listen to his music. Um, but I love the intimacy of that recording and his imagination and playfulness in his rhythm uh, and the way his left hand works, how he thinks with his left hand on the piano is so cool. I love that record. Well, one of my favorites, Bill Evans, Alone Again. Another, uh, you know, I mentioned in, in my notes there, it's fun to listen to how solo pianists uh, or pianists um, address these challenges in a solo format. And Bill is very different. Like I mentioned that Thelonious Monk will often, when they go into time, he'll often go into a stride feel. Oscar Peterson will walk this furious bass line, kind of like do a Ray Brown thing with his left hand. And Bill Evans is much more sparse. Um, he'll just play these little cluster notes, you know, guy tone voicings and so over that. And that was really refreshing to hear. And of course his sound and conception, hearing uh, him solo is beautiful. I, I love Bill Evans. Bobby McFerrin, The Voice. Yeah, so the same kind of like um, the opposite of the density, you know, Oscar Peterson approach, but just austere one voice going. And um, listening to him kind of gave me permission to just play solo guitar with solo lines, which is how most people play, but not how I was thinking. I was thinking like, oh, I always have to have chords and bass line and melody at the same time. And, and um, you don't have to do that. Just sometimes a single note line can be really refreshing in that context. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's well, a lot of these guys are categories unto themselves. But anyway, take six, take six. Yeah, I heard that first album in high school and it and it it was revolutionary for me harmonically at the time. And I've since checked out like Gene Perling and a lot of other like, you know, various gospel groups and of course Duke and Strayhorn and all those arrangements, but that was just such that was one of those recordings that really like shook me. That I was like, "Oh my gosh, what is this?" And I still listen to it 
all these decades later and it still sounds so fresh and and i love it well this has been great this has been really really great it's it's fun i you know one of my favorite things to do in the whole wide world is to have a good conversation with somebody that knows what the f they're talking about <laughs> well i appreciate this conversation it's, <laughs> it's it's mutual i love talking about all things guitar and music with you oh and man 